Welcome to the Crucible. Welcome to the Crucible. Husky, how are you? I'm doing great, Paulie. How you been? You know, I've been better, and I apologize for my voice in advance. Um, I was rocking out last Thursday. What What's today? So we're recording on the 7th. Mm-hmm. I was rocking out last Thursday, man. We went to a concert in Clarkston, Michigan, me, a couple of my brothers, and the best man in my wedding. And, you know, I was the best man in his wedding. So a really good friend. Do you know the band Tool or ever heard of the band Tool? Yes, of course. Okay. The lead singer Maynard turned 60 years old. Isn't that crazy to think about? <laughs> Nuts, right? So he's also in two other bands, Pussifer okay. and A Perfect Circle. Okay. So those two bands and Primus, have you ever heard of the band Primus? Les Claypool. I know Primus. Amazing yep. bassist, probably the best bassist out there. That's could be debatable, but they played for three hours and dude, it was one of the best shows that I have ever been to. Maynard's voice hasn't changed since he has started rock and roll. That's great. That's he good. He's just so good. That sounded like a studio album, that concert. If you were there in Clarkston, Michigan, leave that comment in the comment section. Let me know if you were there. But it was the coolest thing ever. It was. The, That's awesome. They all jammed at the same time. It wasn't, you didn't, there was no waiting for other, they were just all on the stage celebrating his 60th birthday, playing with all the bands. Nobody left the stage. They all just rocked out together. No phones. They want, they, they wanted no phones there. It was just nice. a great show to enjoy. And a, that's I mean, awesome. most, if not all, really did follow that rule. I've been looking on YouTube and I did find a couple <laughs> videos of people recording. And there was a great commentary at the beginning about what they do to people when they find them and they're recording. And it's got a lot to do with the, the mystery meat spam. And they said, well, we find you, we take you out back, we grind you up and you become part of spam. So nice. It was, nice. It was fun. It was a blast. <laughs> but I think I picked up a sickness there. And I did lose my voice for a little bit because we were jamming out, but it's coming along. Yeah, it's glad to hear you, man. Glad glad you're back in full force. And guys, Talk you are listening me. to The Crucible. Uh, I'm Emil, and this is Pauly. And Pauly, today up? we have a very, uh, very interesting topic. Pauly, you saw a video that you brought yes. to my attention. Tell me about it. Okay, so for those who don't know, there is a gentleman by the name of T the silver stacker on YouTube stacking channel. I will leave his information down below. We will leave his information down below. We'll link this video that we're going to talk about his channel. Go to check it out. So it was a PCGS and NGC submission mm. without having the video. And I should have took a note or two. I think they were 1983 Libertads from a bank roll. And he took him to his coin guy, coin shop, coin guy, whatever you want to call him, right? And split the roll right down the middle, sent half to NGC and the other half to PCGS. And this was a this was a long process. They did a video prior showing what they were going to do. Well, now it's here. Three months later, the coins are back and they're checking out the grades, right? And I sent you the link. Oh yeah. And I said, check this out. This is this is actually a pretty good video for a conversation between you and I, and even spark a little interest between the chat and anybody who watches it. Um, number one, who do you prefer? And number two, the outcome of that was kind of crazy. And that's why we're sitting here talking about it. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, we're going to link the video below uh, after this show. You're welcome to watch it and uh, and come back and give us your thoughts on it. But sure. essentially what happened was uh, he first unboxed the uh, P the NGC coins. And if you guys don't know, I'll, I'll tell you, the, the there's really three to four bigger companies that do these gradings. One of them's NGC, uh, Numismatic Grading or Guarantee Corporation. Thankfully, it's okay. right there. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> uh, that's what their slabs look like. Really pretty, you know, white, uh, very clean looking, and they stack really nicely. Uh, yes. The other big one, which I believe has been around a little bit longer than NGC, is PCGS, and their slabs are clear. They also stack really nicely. Um, and then there's a few other ones, um, ANACS, and of course now CAC is also grading coins. There's others as well. Uh, yes. But the thing to know with these is with any any grading corporation, uh, you're you're certifying that it is at whatever grade you're putting it at, and, and these generally go on a scale of uh, you know 
what is it one to 70 or zero yeah, to 70 i don't even know yeah, if there's a zero yeah I, I would say zero to 70 or we'll call it we'll call it zero seven but i believe one to sure. 70. yeah so so it goes up to 70 right yeah. and 70 being an absolutely pristine coin no blemishes no marks no nothing it's perfect like it just got struck today right sure that's what a sure. 70 would be so that's what we're expect, looking for that's what you're always looking for right so you would expect that all of these corporations have the same standards to go by when grading their coins well as a result of this video uh it was quite apparent that they do not grade the same yes. uh paul you want to tell us what what came up with uh ngc how did those look so he got his ngcs back and they ranged from 64 to 66 i believe was the high number on the ngcs um which i i don't it's tough to tell because you're you're watching the video if there's any excitement there now there is some excitement with the pcgs's because some of them did grade a little bit higher on the pcgs side so when they opened those up he got as high as 68s right from from the pcgs so right. the the question they rose was, well, why? I mean, all we did was split the roll right down the middle, and send them in. Why did these come back so different? Why were there so many lower grades with NGC and so many higher grades in PCGS? Now, the higher grades, yes, you're gonna hopefully catch a little bit more money for when you go to resell those because it is a higher graded coin. It's just the name of the game. Higher the grade, the more money it's worth. I think that's right. pretty much why the grading system was invented, right? We had we had Evan on here talking about the Sheldon grading system and why a 70 is a 70, and that's 70 times what do you say the face value of said coin is what it was supposed meant to be. Hmm. So I guess thinking about that, let, let's go back to wh what's the whole purpose of grading in the first place? Why would you want to grade a coin? Number one, to certify that what you have is legit, because I, I know of people who have sent coins in and they come back as fake. Mm -hmm. If they if they didn't have a way to test it, they bought this thing. It looks in pristine condition. And then they get it back with nothing done. And it's just saying this is a fake coin. We, we, we can't grade this. Right. And That's one. Yeah, that's yeah. that's one reason. Then yeah. to keep your coin in the condition that it is in. Now, don't get me wrong. These things, they aren't completely airtight. And over time, silver is going to tarnish, right? Right. But it's it's meant to be able to hold its, the way it looks, I guess, if I want to put it that way. It's right. a 70. If it's, if it's a 70, it should stay a 70 inside of this holder, right? Right. Yep. And it's water resistant. Um, I think water another resistant. good factor to Dust them is that they, for sure. that that guarantee of the grade kind of gives the the, the it's holder, on them. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it gives the holder uh, almost like a, I would say almost like a bargaining chip. It, it saves sure. them the trouble of having to identify the grade by eyeball. Right. So Who if hasn't I go to like into a coin shop and saw all the Morgans and peace dollars that may say MS 65 MS 64. Well, if them were 64s and 65s or higher, don't you think that coin shop would have sent those in already because right. they know the value of a 64 and a 65 over You're talking about 62, 63 in, in the paper flips. Yeah. Right. And in a flip and it's scribbled on there with a pen or yeah, something. Scribbled yeah. on there with yeah. a pen and then you get yep. it and you send it in and it comes back artificially toned details. or <laughs> yeah <laughs> something toned. silly like that yeah yeah no yeah. I've, I've i've definitely been stung by that and undoubtedly we're going to have in the comments somebody say buy the coin not the holder right buy sure the, sure buy it by, sure. by your your own ability to by all means it by eyes right by your vision and That's identifying right. what you see as flaws or imperfections or whatever but this creates a problem when you have ngc grading much lower than pcgs because that tells me one of two things either ngc is undergrading or pcgs is overgrading or, neither one of them is good yeah right, go, go that's ahead. that's the problem with the video is number one it, it is a great video showing the differences between the grading as far as as far as we know by watching the videos those coins were in the same exact condition that they were when they got shipped to each grading company. Right. 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 
now it just means okay, can he can he take those ones from NGC, bust them out of the holders, and expect to get higher grades from PCGS? We don't know. I I, I we we don't know what's going to happen there, right? Oh yeah. What what we do know is. You said was one undergrading. Well, is one being more strict? Is does one company over the other only have a handful of 1983 Libertads in a grade of a 67 or higher? And that's what they have to go off of. Say, well, we have these ones that we've already graded, and this coin looks nothing like those. So how could right. I give this a 68 when it looks more like a 65? Yeah. And not as an accusation, but there is the possibility also of population control, which I mean, sure. let's let's be honest, that that could be a case. That could be a case if they say, hey, look, guys, for this coin in this year, we only have, you know, seven instances of a 70 and we have yep. 45 instances of a 69. Uh, we don't want to see too many more. Right. So grade you know, very strictly on those. And, and that could happen. But the problem is it's not objective anymore. If you're doing population control, that's not an objective evaluation of a coin. You're just being bad at what you <laughs> sh should be doing by just grading the coin. And they have so much stuff sent to them anymore. I mean... You're talking monster boxes of eagles being shipped to these companies just to catch a grade of a Boolean coin. That's insane. Yeah. Insane. Just to be, again, like, like we've talked about, you're at that point, there's nothing special about this coin right here. This is a Type 2 American Silver Eagle 2021 with a label on it. Yep. This This came out of a tube that looks just like this right here mm -hmm. you know it's it's crazy to think of how many of these are being graded anymore and that's not that it's a bad thing because i get that people collect they do collect the labels and we i also have pcgs here so these were both graded 70s right mm -hmm. yep i mean i gotta i gotta assume that they're both 70s it's 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 the <laughs> It's the goofy. It, we can only assume, right? And, and yeah, that's I mean, is, like, that's the problem. That there we go. That's the problem we're having now with the 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 way they those were graded. Now it's an assumption. Was a guy having a bad day or a gal having a bad day who graded those coins from NGC that day? Right. Or did, did they, they not, just yeah not pay not attention? Like the yeah. Did they not pay yeah. attention? So I've I've gotten I've received a. Uh, American Silver Eagle graded 70 that had clearly a scratch going right down the side of it, like right down the field. And I was like, how? I mean, it's 70. I'm glad it's a 70. But do I but feel how? comfortable selling that as a 70, knowing that it's got a big old scratch on it? Yeah. You know, like like that's, I don't know. I almost felt like, why was this sold to me as a 70? Why did this get graded as a 70? Because I paid for a 70. That's not a 70. So right. it, it's... It puts you in a predicament uh, as a buyer, as a seller, as a collector. Uh, what I did like is for a period of time, CAC was putting on those yes. those labels. Yes, they were basically an independent reviewer. You know, me on my on my main job, I'm a, I'm an auditor, and that's the purpose of an auditor is quality assurance. You're assuring sure. the quality sure. of a process that's in place. So in this case, you have these coin graders, right? And these coin graders are identifying. Uh, these coins based on their grade and they're labeling it as such. And you would expect that there would be some kind of independent, preferably third party, such as CAC, that would go behind and verify that, yes, that is accurate. That is actually that grade. But then they start their own company and now they're, yeah. uh, they start their own grading service. So it kind of takes away from that because, yes, you can get it directly from CAC, but now who's auditing them? You know, who's verifying yet? That their stuff? Can, can you can what? you or I send a coin to CAC yet and get it graded, or is it still like I haven't, I haven't only? checked. I'm not sure. Um, I mean, we could talk to Sean D'Souza, see if sure. he knows. Uh, sure. But yeah, that's that's something that we could uh, we could look into, uh, guys. If you know in the chat, uh, let me know or let me and Paul yeah. know if if that's a thing. Can you actually submit to CAC? Yeah, uh, also, if if you've know. ever received 
a coin that has a, a misgrade and you think it's really, really a bad one, let us know. We would love to hear about that. So that's that's a good spot to kind of end this one other than who do you prefer over grading? If you were to send coins in, now I know it's kind of a touchy subject with you because you did have some things happen to some of your coins sent into what was it ngc yeah yeah i i had a lot of bitterness and resentment towards so without bringing NGC. up too much heartache we're also going to link that video in the description of this video oh, definitely yeah. check out that one but i would have to say you've cut ties with ngc then huh uh, I have not submitted anything to them, and I have ended my membership with NGC. Um, if I do buy a coin here and there and it's graded by them, fine. I didn't sure. have an issue with their grading. Uh, it was more their handling of my coins that I had very, submitted. Very, very special, limited. Poorly, yeah, poorly handled. Coins. Very special coins. Uh, that was but a good video. You guys should definitely check that one out. Um, the slabs. As far as the design, which do you prefer superior? I actually really like NGC slabs. I think the uh, the PCGS take up less space, uh, yep. which is nice, but it's only marginal. But the NGC slabs, they kind of seem more sturdy. They seem more uh, they actually durable. Stack fairly nice together too. Yeah. So, which is nice. I'm the same way. I prefer NGC over PCGS. Although what the ultra breaks did with this one, it's, it's actually pretty cool with the American flag. I've never seen it before, but I do dig their gold shield label. It's just their, mm. it's not a standard. You have to pay extra for it because I guess you get some type of imaging. You get some high right. definition imaging online of it, but the, like this plastic because of the white, you can't tell that it is like super clear, but even with the, coloring on this this plastic is just so like crystal clear yeah so I, I i do dig that about pcgs over ngc but as far as in hand i just like the ngc over PCGS. yeah i'm the same so yeah I let think us the, know uh, what you think as well in the comment section i think the pcgs one doesn't scratch as easily either um i feel and like ngc with, scratches easily. now that we're on scratch resistant why why pay extra for scratch resistant just give me one slab if you're going right. to charge me five dollars for, <laughs> I mean, just give me the damn slab. I don't want it scratched. Just like, yeah. like lenses and new glasses. Well, do you want the anti scratch or don't you? Just give me it. Don't, don't yeah. ask. Just give me it. I'm going to be using be these things. I, they got to be cleaned. I don't want them scratched. Just right. give me the anti scratching, please. So All right. I'm very curious to see what T and the boys do with those coins, if they, if anything at all. But it does raise a lot of questions like we wanted to do here. So answer, raise the questions in the comments of why. Why is one different than the other? Come back after you watch that video if you haven't watched it and let us know what you think in the comments section. And oh, don't forget to don't sign forget. up. Sign up sign to win the five ounce wood pour. Description below. It is there. You'll, you'll find Husky, we will see you next week, brother. Peace.